Hi boys and girls, this is the 4-5 slope intercept form part B instructional video. All right. Now, with the, within part A, you were introduced to slope intercept form. Slope intercept form is the way you write a linear equation and it is called slope intercept form because you have y equals m, which is your slope, x, and then plus or minus b, which is your y-intercept. So m is your slope, b is your y-intercept, right? So they call, um, what, the, what we did in the first part was they said, okay, the slope is this and the y-intercept is this, write the equation. Now they're going to say, you have to find the slope and you have to find the y-intercept and then write the equation. So it's a little bit more in detailed and uh, tricky. So here's what they say you should do. Um, when you're given a graph and they want you to write the, in, the equation in slope-intercept form, first thing you do is you find the location where the line crosses the y-axis to determine the y-intercept. This is where the line hits. This is your y-axis and the line hits it right here, so that's negative 1, which means your, your y-intercept is negative 1. But what is your slope? Use the line to find your slope. Traveling from the left point to the right point, your first move is up 3, so that's positive 3. Second move is right 2, so that's positive 2. So your slope is 3 over 2, and you always have to remember to put the x there. That was a common mistake in Part A. Always remember to put the x in it. Okay, so here's another example. Okay, the first thing you want to do is find the y-intercept. Here's zero, and it crosses at one, two, three, four. So the y-intercept is four. What's the slope? Traveling from the left point to the right point, you go down one and right two. So the slope is negative one-half. So, let's see, got, they want me to write it in the boxes here. Down one, right two, okay? And the y-intercept we already figured out was four, okay? So, when you come down here, you put negative one-half x plus four. And it's plus four because it's a positive four. If it was a negative four, we would write minus four. So, here's one for us to do all on our own. We need to find the y-intercept. Well, that's right here, so that would be at 1, 2. So the, the y-intercept is a positive 2, and the slope going from the left point to the right point, our first move is down 1, 2, 3, down 3, right 1. So our slope is negative 3. So our equation is y equals negative 3x, because our slope is negative 3, our y-intercept is positive 2, so we would plus 2. And that would be the equation of that line written in slope-intercept form. Just when you thought you were getting good at it, they throw a word problem at you. Okay, when an equation in slope-intercept form applies to a real-world situation, the slope represents the rate of change. So now slope is now going to be referred to as rate of change. Sorry for my messy handwriting. And the y-intercept is referred to as the initial value. This helps you, initial value, this helps you know what the slope is and what the y-intercept is of a word problem. Okay, so here we have an, our, our problem. Bamboo is one of the fastest growing plants on earth. Suppose a bamboo seedling is five centimeters tall and then grows at a rate of 6.5 centimeters per day, okay? This is the initial value. The initial value, the y-intercept, is 5. It's growing at 6.5 centimeters per day, 6.5 centimeters every one day. So that means that our slope is 6.5. And our y-intercept is where it starts, its initial height, which was 5. So our equation is 6.5x, because 6.5 is our slope or rate of change, plus 5, because 5 was our initial value or our y-intercept. Here's another example. 
The student council is selling t-shirts during Spirit Week. It costs $20 for the design and $5 to print each shirt. Now, if you're not sure which number is the y-intercept and which one is the slope, um, here's what you need to ask yourself. Which one would I possibly have to use over and over and over again? They only charge $20 to start the process, but then $5 every time you buy a shirt. So five for shirt one, five for shirt two, five for shirt three. Okay, the one you have to use over and over again is going to be your slope, all right? The y-intercept is the starting point or the initial charge, okay? So that means that we have an equation of y equals 5x plus 20, okay? And here the initial charge for the design is $20. Um, the slope is $5. The y-intercept is 20, which is what I said. Okay, so we have Faith is saving money in order to purchase a new smartphone. She started out with $30 in her savings account. There they're even giving you a hint. Started out with. Doesn't that sound like an initial value? That's your y-intercept. Also known as your initial value. She started out with 30, okay? And she's saving $15 each week. 15 is the number you would have to use over and over again. 15 this week, 15 next week, 15 the following week. That's your slope or your rate of change. Rate of change is 15. So the equation would be y equals 15 is our rate of change, x, don't forget to put the x, plus 30. What this means is this is the total amount of money she has in her account at any time. She started with $30, and every time, every week that goes by, she saves an extra $15. So this is the equation that represents the amount of money she has in the bank. Now they're going to give you a table, okay? Tables are still your friend, all right? When we have a table, we still, we need to find the, the slope or the M or the rate of change. And then we need the y-intercept, which is the starting value, okay? So we know slope is change in y over change in x. I've said that a million times. Well, how is y changing? y is going up by 12. How is x changing? Up by 2. Always reduce your slope. We have slope of 6. But what's the y-intercept? Well, the y-intercept is always the point where x is 0. This is your starting point. No time has passed. This is your initial value. Right here is 10. Okay, That's your starting point. So you're looking for the point where x is 0. All right. So when we go to write the equation, we have our slope, which is 6x, and our y-intercept, which is positive 10. And so there is the equation we're looking for. Another example of a uh, table given to you, this is x, how is x changing? Up by 2, up by 2, up by 2, up by 2. So x is increasing by 2 each time. What is y doing? y is going uh, down by 80, down by 80, down by 80, down by 80. Slope is the change in y over the change in x. Simplify that and you get negative 40. What's this problem about anyway? Amanda's reading a novel for language arts. The table shows the number of pages Amanda has left after a certain number of hours she spent reading. Okay, so this is our slope or our rate of change right there. But what's our initial value? Well, here's the thing. Before she started reading, how many pages did she have to read? 360. The initial value, or the y-intercept, is always where x is 0. So this is our initial value right here, or our y-intercept, 360. So let's see, what did they got over here? We, we should have put the negative 80 here. We should have put the positive 2 here. We should get negative 40 over 1. And then they simplify it just to negative 40. The initial value is 360. And so then we write the equation, negative 40x, that's where the slope goes, and 360 was the initial value. Okay, so um, they're telling you the relationship between the data and the table is linear. Write an equation in slope-intercept form. 
How is X changing? Up by one, up by one, up by one. How is Y changing? Down by three, down by three, down by three. So my slope is negative three over one. The Y always goes on top, which is more easily written as negative three. That's my slope. What's my initial value? I told you initial value is whenever X is zero. So when X is zero, what is Y? Y is three, so the Y intercept is three. So our equation, y equals, I need my slope, slope is negative 3, negative 3x, I need my y-intercept, my y-intercept is positive 3, so the equation is y equals negative 3x plus 3. Not too bad. You're still using skills you learned in last chapter. Now, Amir wants to ship a birthday present to his brother. Express shipping charges a $5 insurance fee to protect the items that are shipped and 50 cents for every ounce the item weighs. Okay, so we have express shipping. That's the one in the word problem. There are two companies here, okay? Express shipping charges a $5 upfront fee and then 50 cents for every ounce. So this is our y-intercept, that's our starting point, and 50 cents per every ounce is our rate of change or our slope. Okay, so express shipping's equation would be y equals 0.5x, that's just 50 cents written in a decimal form, you don't need that zero, plus the $5 original fee. Priority Postal Priority Postal um, their uh, y-intercept is right here. It's where the line touches y, so that would be 3. And we need to find the slope, though. So going from that point to this point, we go up 1, 2, 3, up 3, and we go right 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so our slope is 3 fourths x, and the initial value was positive 3. But the question is... Amir wants to ship a container that weighs, or a package that weighs 14.2 ounces. Which company charges less and how much less? So they're saying when X is 14.2, which one's cheaper and by how much? Gonna need a calculator for this. All right, so express shipping, we go Y equals 0.5 times 14.2 plus five. The first thing you do is this multiplication problem. 0.5 times 14.2 is 7.1 plus 5 gives us 12.1, which is actually $12.10. That's what Express Shipping will charge him for the package. What about Priority Postal? I'm getting the feeling, well, they start out with less, but they're charging more. This is actually 0.75, so they're charging more per pack per ounce, but they have a lower upfront fee. So this is going to be interesting how this works out. We're going to do y equals 3 fourths times 14.2 uh, plus 3. Okay, so 3 fourths times 14.2, oh, backspace. 14.2 equals 10.65, and that would give us 13.65, $13.65. Okay, so who's cheaper? Express is cheaper. And by how much? 13.65 minus 12.10, $1.55 cheaper. Okay, was that fun? I like it. I think we have one more like that. Yes, we do, and this is my last example too. Okay, Katie wants to attend fitness classes at a local gym. The costs of attending Fitness for Life are represented in the graph shown. So we have two companies again. We have Fitness for Life okay, 
okay? And the other gym is Fitness World. Okay, so Fitness for Life is in the, in the uh, thing here. We see our y-intercept is 80. What's our slope? This is going up by 20, up by 40. So up 40, and then right, and these are going up by 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So the slope is positive 10. Y equals 10x. The initial value was 80 plus 80. Okay. Fitness World charges a registration fee of $90 plus $8 per month. So $90 is the initial fee and $8, you pay $8 every month. It's the one that repeats. So the slope is always the one that's repeating and the initial fee is the one-time charge. Okay. She wants to be a member for 18 months, and they want to know which gym charges less and how much less. So we're going to substitute 18 for X in both of these equations. Both equations, we substitute 18 for X. Okay. This one, 10 times 18 is 180 plus 80 is 260 okay so fitness for life will cost you 260 dollars oh i can't do that in my head eight times 18 i mean it could but it would take me a minute fitness world is going to cost her 144 plus 90 so 234 okay so which one is cheaper Fitness World is cheaper. And how much? 260 minus 234, $26. Okay. So those are your Part B practice problems. Uh, your Part B examples, I'm sorry. The next video will be the Part B practice problems. For now, though, you get a secret word assignment for this little video, and the secret word is snow, okay? So when you go on over to McGraw-Hill, there'll be a Part B secret word assignment, and you select the answer that is snow, okay? All right, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in class.